Climbing League of Legends is hard, and it won't get any easier. Uh, the game has grown significantly in the past year with Arcane's release on Netflix and other factors, so the competitive pool is going to be massive. But Season 12 drops tomorrow, so you decided this will be the year that you prove your friends wrong, you finally hit Diamond, Masters, not Bronze. Uh, statistically, most of you won't hit your goals. Uh, no, I'm not trying to be a dick. That's why there's a ranking system. A majority of you have to be stuck there for a reason. So, how are you going to be the number one this year? Make the climb. Actually be the exception. Uh, even though I probably have COVID and I sound like garbage right now, uh, my name is Jew Brownie and I'm here to give you five tips you need to prevent falling in ELO hell and climb solo queue for 2022. And uh, before we get started, let me be clear that everyone has their own demons. Your obstacle specific to you, it might fall under these categories or tips, and most of them should at least apply to you guys somewhat, but some of them might not. There might be other reasons or ways to climb I didn't address here, so it's not super black and white. Test what works, and I'm gonna have goosebumps saying this, be patient. That is the only way to climb, unless you have a natural gift, unless you're a prodigy, okay? You have 10 months to figure this out this year, okay? You have 10 months. So let's jump right into tip number one, something I call creating a balanced leverage, okay? My biggest struggle in the past few years, playing too much, okay? I would just queue for hours without learning a damn thing. And the reason I did this psychologically was because League was my source of main achievement. Um, I feel like I have a great life, you know, I have a job. Like I have sources of achievement in the real world, but we all know, we all know this feeling, right? Like, when you're in the zone, none of that matters. Uh, you're, the moment you see defeat in ranked solo queue after you went like 10 and 0, someone threw or whatever, you're like not okay with it. Not ending on a loss, right? That type of culture. Uh, this actually motivated me to create small victories in my daily routine, like doing laundry or doing a workout, creating just a safety net. And this safety net would make it so that if I had an awful two games in solo queue, I would have the patience and the humility to push my chair back and say, okay, let me learn from this and we'll get them next time. So balanced leverage is having other sources of satisfaction to motivate logistical decisions. We're really starting large here. I promise we'll go more narrow. So I say this tip first because it's so important. Diversify your assets, guys, just like investing. My second tip to climbing solo queue is VOD reviews. Now, now look, watching your games over again is the without a doubt single best way to improve specific problems but let's be honest here because this has been probably drilled into your head if you had a coach or watched other videos like this you're tired of hearing about it uh frankly i am too no one does a vod review right uh, i've seen professional coaches who spend two hours looking over a 35 minute game they give hundreds of pieces of feedback so what do you, what do you think happens when a coach gives all this feedback, then once the session is over, the per what do you think the person does? They load up solo queue? You think they learn anything? Nope, in one ear, out the other. They just made the exact same mistakes. This happens all the time. It also happens when you review your own VODs if you try to put too much pressure on yourself. VOD reviews should be short because you learn best when you take one key takeaway from your games. Just keep your VOD reviews super short uh, if you're impatient like me, queue up for next game while loading your VOD. Make sure it's downloaded in your match history before you start the queue. Look at the game, identify your first mistake you made, try to understand why you made it and what you can do differently. Moving forward, make note of it and then close. You're done. Self-awareness will be your catalyst to actually climbing through VOD reviews, I promise. Now tip number three, this is especially true to junglers, but mute all, slash mute all. It's funny because I used to say that only newer junglers should not be muting their teammates for communication reasons. Now I feel like junglers especially should be doing this. It's important to understand how chat and pings can be useful. You know what your team wants to do, you have you get, can get the summoner spell timings, right? Like if an area is warded and you're a jungler or if you're just roaming, this stuff is important. But I'm gonna talk about realistically, okay? What actually happens, not on paper. In most situations, the payoff for full muting is higher than the information you're receiving. So 
because you're hurting yourself more than you're helping yourself. Staying away from toxicity is easier said than done. I can't count on my two hands how many times I've muted all. And then unmuted my team to blame, cause havoc, try to start a conversation and be like, what's up? My ego would get in the way, emotions, it just ruins. You look back at it like you're never in the right, okay? This is the hardest thing most players have to do. But mute all is your key to clearing out the noise. You can't work in a distracted environment. You can't improve in a distracted environment. I'm sure there's other distractions happening in your life as it is. Muting your teammates allows you to apply what you've learned in your games. I mean, let's not even talking about the chat for a second, okay? If you consistently lean on the team pings, or you even let it influence you 10% of the time, you're gonna stay where you are, rank-wise. You're not gonna climb above the rest of your team. Think of it this way, if you move into a small apartment with five friends who are unmotivated, they don't wanna do anything exciting, or they take up smoking, uh, no shade to smokers, I'm just saying like bad habits in general, I have news for you because you're most likely gonna pick up those habits and you're gonna act like just like your roommates. You become your environment. Similar to how when you climb solo queue, you pick up the bad habits of your teammates or you join bad fights. They, they're like, hey, on this way, you know, get off the objective, join this fight, whatever. You have to play what you know is right. It's one thing learning to get better at the game, but actually implementing it is near impossible if your teammates decisions who are that rank help you make the decision. Uh, this is the power of mute all. So slash mute all, do it. Now, before I get into these last two tips, I'm gonna be mentioning some concepts that you might be familiar with and you might be wondering more in depth about these concepts and other things I mentioned. So if you actually want to improve in League, especially as a jungler, uh, where my jungler's at, you are doing yourself a massive favor uh, if you like the video and click the subscribe button. I may have a hundred or something subs. Uh, it may show that right now, I forgot, like 120 or something. Honestly, my community is like three or four people. And in 2022, I'm going to be busting out content that will change your life in this game. Seriously guys, I mean this statement. Uh, you subscribing to me at this stage is going to make you a key player in growing these types of videos. Uh, go ahead and do it now while you have two seconds. Thank you so much in advance. Now, tip number four is learn the golden triangle. Uh, the reason most people make mistakes and don't climb, is they go into autopilot mode. We're all familiar with this, right? After three or four games, you just become unfazed and you don't actually think about what you're doing. But we'll come back to this, okay? Don't forget autopilot mode. Now let's shift gears for a second. What are three things both laners and junglers have in common? First, they both have to track the enemy jungler. Uh, I mean, that's critical for everyone playing League, you know where the enemy jungler is. Uh, two is how lane states work, you know, the three types of lane states. Frozen lanes, slow pushing, fast pushing. And the third similarity between junglers and laners, they should all have awareness of objectives. Now let's get back to the autopilot problem. There is a great tip someone told me once about putting on an interval timer, just searching interval timer on YouTube, that goes off every five minutes. It's supposed to remind you that you're an autopilot, right? It like refocuses you in the game. Uh, I have an idea to build on top of it. So the three factors I mentioned, enemy, enemy jungler, lane states, objectives, this is what I call the golden triangle. Thinking about these three things in like an interval regularly, but if you load up a five minute interval on YouTube and then every time you hear the beep, train yourself to think about the golden triangle, you'll thank me later. That's gonna help your macro, that's gonna help you climb. And my last tip for climbing in season 12, forgive yourself. You're your own harshest critic. Climbing should be fun. Like, honestly, if improving and feeling uncomfortable doesn't really feel right, like, is that really what you want to do? Think about the reasons why you're climbing. Is it just social pressure? Do you want to prove something to yourself? Do you have a goal to be a pro or a streamer? If you don't meet those expectations, you're going to be hard on yourself. And all the people that usually get to this stage where they start to have to change their behavior, they usually quit or they blame their teammates. It's, it's super easy to just quit. Even if you're viewing this video in August of 2022, three months before the season ends, go easy on yourself. You still have time. Improvement takes time. You can climb beyond your goals. I have no doubt in that. I'm not trying to be corny here, but you know how I mentioned in tip three about muting all? Yeah, just do that to your own brain. Self-defeating behavior is a thing. It's the biggest reason people stay in diamond for eight years straight or why many people can't seem to push past the goal one wall. And I don't know if, if there's something deeper here of like the reason why someone can't allow themselves to be happy. There's some real Freudian stuff going on, right? Um, we're not gonna go that deep, um, but just look at the word self-defeating. It's in the word 
before you adopt any of these tips, adopt a long-term mindset, okay? Last year, I had a 23-game loss streak as Trundle, two days before I broke into Masters, for the first time. Not after a single defeat did I say, oh, I'm trying this for nothing, or I suck ass, I should pick up Dota. No, no, just stop. No one should have to play Dota, okay? Uh, that's true self-defeating behavior right there. <laughs> but uh, that is that is my five tips, everyone. This is going to be your season because you're going to subscribe to Do Brownie right now if you haven't already. Uh, and you're also going to be subbing to the Twitch as well. But seriously, I don't have a Discord plug or anything. No OnlyFans, no SoundClouds, all right? Calm down. Just sub to the YouTube and Twitch for now. Uh, we'll see where it takes us, okay? But uh, good luck, guys. Message me if you have any questions. Uh, I'd be happy to help you guys with your climbing questions in the comments. I will respond to every single comment. Make today a good one, and peace out.